In this case example, we have Chris Lopez. He's a 21-year-old junior at UTEP. He's a pre-med student. He's aspiring to be a physician. Um, he is the child of migrant from Mexico who traveled to the United States while his mother was pregnant with him. Um, they traveled a long ways from southern eastern Mexico. Um, the family has worked as farm workers um, throughout their time in the United States. Um, farm workers are very laborious work. There's not a lot of services and, and programs available to them. So a lot of the uh, some of the problems that the family has, has encountered has been um, related to the laborious work of farm work, meaning that they haven't had access to health care. They've had um, physical problems due to the work. <clears throat> the problems related to the farm work, um, such as musculoskeletal problems, both parents have knee and back problems. Um, because they haven't had access to health care, both of them have chronic health disease, hypertension, and diabetes. And this has resulted in, in their latter parts of their lives to really make them debilitated and not able to function in their daily, daily lives. So at this point, um, Chris is left to take care of his three siblings and his parents. Because his parents don't have, do not have any health care insurance, <clears throat> they have to travel to uh, Mexico Juarez to get services. So that means that, that Chris has to cross the border several times a week, take his family to um, physicians in Mexico, help their, his family navigate the healthcare system there, um, which creates a huge barrier in terms of his ability to go to school and um, function well at school. <clears throat> One of his professors, Dr. Chavez, noticed that his grades had declined significantly and referred him to student services. At student services, they found out that he was having all these difficulties and troubles, so he was referred to Mrs. Martinez, who is a licensed clinical social worker, to work with him on some of these stressors. Hi, good morning, ma'am. Thank you. I'm Virginia Martinez. Chris Lopez, nice to meet you. Come on. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, you can see Chris. So how are you doing? I'm okay. Good day so far. How about yourself? It's been a good day, yes. Good. Yes, thank you. So how was your trip out here? It's good, you know, traffic this time of day, but hey, what can you expect? Exactly. Yeah, no, Park, so yeah you know, and then parking, but yeah. it's okay, not bad. So uh, what happened between coming here in the morning, you know, and coming here to this, from home to here? What, what were, what was going on in your thinking? Uh, I don't know, it was, you know, at first, Getting them, making sure everything was was ready at the house, you know, making sure that my mom and dad, everything they had, everything they needed for today, or at least for you know about two hours, that I'm gonna be busy. Uh, but then driving over here, it's a little little, little off time per se. Uh, the drive wasn't that bad, probably eh, 20, 30 minutes. No traffic, bad areas, but eh, nothing better than work. Eh, nothing bad. Uh, but I'm uh, kind of just not sure what. What we'll be talking about, what we're going to be doing, so uh, a okay. little, little iffy. So, so what, what, what happened at home? How was your mom and dad? Uh, they're okay. You know, they've 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 had some some issues here in the past couple of uh, about months in the last year or so. Uh, you know, nothing I can't handle. You know, they they're both very hardworking people. Uh, cool. So they've been having little issues with their health, but. Yeah, again, it's it's just mm -hmm. something that we we can't have, that we can't handle. Well, that's good. It sounds like you've got a grasp on things. Um, what what are you studying for? Tell me about that. Uh, I'm actually this is my junior year at UTEP, <laughs> uh, part of the pre med program. So you know, uh, getting ready to finish up, hopefully within the next year or so, uh, and then depending, uh, hopefully go to med school. I know. Now there's one here in El Paso, so that, that helps, you know, get to stay here at home and be able to still care for, for my, my mom and dad and uh, my little brother and sister. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, it all looks well. Hopefully, again, you know, a year, year and a half mm -hmm. and, and be done and, you know, get my, my, get my degree and eventually go on and get that, get the, you know, the MD. 
That sounds wonderful. Yes, and so you, you're you're a native El Paso, from what I pick up. Yeah, I was actually uh, born here in El Paso, but you know all my family were were down from the interior of Mexico, so <clears throat> uh, most of the family is down there. We still got we got family here in El Paso too. Um, you know, my parents worked in the the uh, the chile farms and hatch right here in New oh, Mexico. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's we've always kind of had this little area mm -hmm. of, of of the U.S. Mexico. So yeah, you could say I'm a native of Paso. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like this is where you want to be in El Paso. Yeah, and again, you know, my my mom and dad are here. My little brother and sister. Uh, we got family and friends and, and everyone's here so so we got a good a good thing going gosh it seems like you know your family is of tremendous value to you yeah 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 they are they're they're, they're a heck of a uh, yeah, big 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 value big support and, and you're the oldest of, of the siblings yes ma'am yeah i'm the oldest of three i have a little brother and a little sister gosh and how do you get along with them <laughs> well uh, you know, I'm not home that much, uh, but at, when I, I try to, to help them out, and they're both in, you know, still in, in uh, grade school, uh, one's entering middle school and one's still in, in elementary school. So they're, they're young, young mm -hmm. ones. Uh, I don't want to say a pain in the butt, but you know, they're, they're, they're good kids. Uh, just making sure that they, they walk that straight line and, and are, so you're all over the place. You're a student. <laughs> and you've got parents. Yeah, it's, parents. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah it, it's, it's a little hard sometimes, but hey, you know, I, I got it. It's, it's good. I got this. Well, it sounds more like a blessing to me rather <laughs> than a hardship. Yeah, no, I, all to Diosito, man. He, he gave me the strength, and mm -hmm. um, because of him and everything that my parents did, you know, that's, that's why we're here. We're here. We're still, still chugging along. Well, it sounds like your parents did a good job. I mean, you've got you've got a plan, you've got a vision, and um, you'll be staying in the community. God knows this community needs doctors. Oh yes, yeah, yes they do. Yes. And so, what what is it that you know you find uh, you know that that you're struggling with right now? Because uh, you mentioned at the beginning your uh, your stress. Well, uh, it's not really, I guess you could say stressed. I mean, it's, I don't know, Dr. Chavez, one of my professors, you know, she, she pulled me aside the other day and uh, I don't think it's a problem, uh, you know, but, but, you know, my grades have been slipping a little uh, and, but no, it's, it's okay. I think it's just, we hit a little rough patch right there uh, about, about four or five months ago. Uh, that just my mom and my dad they both had you know doctor's appointments and so I really didn't have time to study as much as I I know I could have and I mean I, I know this stuff it's just just ran out of time uh, so basically it's it's managing the time and and I, I feel like uh, you you care so much about your parents which is, is understandable yeah you know? they um, they did their part yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now it's not, it sounds like it's your turn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm the oldest, the oldest, the oldest boy, you know, and so yeah, I'm I'm the man in charge. You know, mom and dad can't work anymore. Uh, they, they had some them, some health issues that they're dealing with, <clears throat> and uh, you know, but but again, it's it's. So you you feel you have to take the lead on this, you know, and make sure they're they're taken care of, they're healthy. Yeah, no, I mean, you have to. I mean, it's it's it's. It's not a, a matter of, of, you know, I chose to me, you have to, you know, you're, I'm the oldest man, you know, the man of the house, you know, my mm -hmm. dad's still, my dad's still there, uh, but, but still, you know, it's, um, I take over this. And you know what, Chris, you know, that's, that's, that's really a blessing because it's, it's consistent with, with, with mm -hmm. you know, you're the oldest, you're the male, and it sounds like you have a lot of inner strengths. You know, those strengths that, that you got from your parents, you know, and respeto mm -hmm. comes out, you know, with a, a lot of, um, not obligation, I'm not picking up, I'm picking up a sense of, of, uh, of this powerful love and connection with your, with your familia. Yeah, 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 no, I just, you know, they, they did so much, again, you know, uh, 
my mom literally when 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 they live uh and they they trekked all the way up here you know my mom was pregnant with me when when they moved up to to hatch mm-hmm. uh well not to, well, to work at hatch they moved to el paso uh and, you know all the work that they did uh this is this is our area you know mm-hmm. we grew up here but my son I, I went to school here my little brothers and sisters went here uh you know my dad built the house where where we are now mm-hmm. so you know it's, it's so it sounds like you you're very proud of your parents for, yeah oh yeah you know they they went through a lot of pain and suffering as immigrants mm-hmm. which again you know immigrants that come they they migrate from one place to another it's 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 a hard thing and, and it impresses me that you see that you see those strengths in them that you want to not a payback but a um, a loving respectful type of um, caring for your yeah. for your um, parents <clears throat> and, um, and that's very impressive now I do pick up the also the school, you know, your your own individual goals per se, yeah, yeah. and and uh, you know how do I take care of my padres and, and at the same time not do bad with my grades because right. I have a vision. So um, they also gather instilled good qualities of um, values in education. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's you know my mom would always tell me it's like you know. Pretty much, uh, you know, in Spanish, she would say like, "Okay, okay, trabajas todo el tiempo." Like she doesn't want me to work like what they did. Uh, you know, it's always education, 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 and that was kind of what pushed me to to where I am now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, it, it's hard when when. Uh, well, I mean, their their health isn't the best, and then make sure that my little brother and sister, you know, again, they still you know make would be that example for them. But hey, you know it's <clears throat> it's hard. But yeah, you know we're mm-hmm. it's, it's going there. It's getting there. And uh, what have you thought about as far as you know helping them so you can get them in the right direction towards um, managing their symptoms of health? Oh, I just, well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, even, I don't really know what we have here. Uh, it, it's just. By the time I get out of school, you know, sometimes it's a little, it's a little late. You know, sometimes I do skip class uh, because they have their, their appointments, and since they don't have insurance, we have to go to Juarez to to go to the doctor's appointments, and then La Línea, you know, the line on the bridge. Mm-hmm. God knows that takes forever in a day. Yeah, uh, I can <laughs> You know, like sometimes it's it's one of those like, oh man, I hit a break, and it's like a twenty minute wait. <clears throat> And sometimes it's like the two hour waits. No kidding. Huh? And Jesus. But, uh, well, you mentioned uh, you're here in El Paso, your roots are here. Uh, you mentioned La Familia is uh-huh. here. Well, tell me about what, what other family members are there. So I got, I got uh, two uncles um, and an aunt, you know, both. Uh, one from my, my aunt is from my mom's side, and my uncles are from my dad's side. <clears throat> um, they're, they're both. But all three are, are doing well. Um, they got a stable, they got a stable job. Their family's here, so I got some cousins. Um, we get a, you know during the the holidays, you know, we get the whole family together in the house and have you know, big cookout, la carnes, and you know the scala and everything. So yeah, you know we're probably not the healthiest of people, but hey, whatever. <laughs> it's good food, and so yeah, I mean we got we got a good good group here. Plus, you know sometimes on Sundays my mom. She, she like loves going to church, and so I take her to church. My dad yeah, sometimes, mm-hmm. but yeah, he'll still go. So we still got a good connection there with the church, like it was a uh, San Jose. Mm-hmm. So you know the priest knows my mom already by name. Um, they always get together. Our, we always kind of go get menudo afterwards. Mm-hmm. So again, I guess food is the <laughs> the tie-in factor. That's uh, but yeah, no, she she's devoted. I mean, like you know, I still got my. When I eat that, like from my grandma, so you know, uh, yeah. I mean, everything from my family to you know, like the little the church family that we have. Correct. So, yes. so yeah, we we we've, I'd say we we we're blessed. You know, the Sito nos dio buen grupo. They gave us a good group to to kind of. Chris, the more I listen to you, the more I think you're so much more blessed than. Yeah, I anticipated. No, I think we, we all are. Uncles, aunts, uh, cousins, uh, um, ties to your community. Mm-hmm. Y no me sorprende. 
This is very, very consistent with, with a cultura. It's, it's, it's a richness there. Have you thought about how you can maybe ask them or talk to them about them? It seems like they're very, very uh, well connected, all the familia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll be, again, yeah, we get along. Everything's mm -hmm. good. But I don't, know, I don't know about asking for help. I mean, you know, I've. I think I got it. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it gets a little hard sometimes, but I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean I, 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 I got a good grasp on it. Uh, and it's food for thought, because it sounds yeah, to me yeah, like yeah. you just want to take charge of it all right, right. there. <clears throat> and that comes back to, to the um, familismo, el respeto a sus padres, you know, it's, it's very understandable, it's very impressive, and, and that is a tremendous strength. And like all strengths, you know, overutilized, they can somehow work against us. Yeah. And um, and you're talking about your individualism, your 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 personal goals, and seeing yourself down the road as a doctor, and and that's wonderful. I just wanted you to get some thoughts of that. Have you even spoken to anyone of them? Well, uh, I've I've brought it up maybe once or twice when we get when we get together. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, you know how it is, you know, India starts like, oh, well, you should do this, you should do this, and then my deal gets into it, my other cousins, and so everybody in the just starts kind of, and I was like, man, you know, I should have been. So you get over flooded. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and they want to do You know, care. someone wants to do this, and someone wants to do that, and then someone's like, you know, I, I, I know, I, 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 I don't want to say I know best, but you know, my parents have lived with me their entire life, so, and I've lived with them, so I think I, you know, if everyone knows what's best for them, I think I know what's best for them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and that's good, you know, that's that's understandable, especially if this was an onset of uh, decline in health right. within the past months or so. And it sounds to me like uh, there is um, there's ways that you can identify what tasks are needed. Mm -hmm. And maybe think about, you know, sorting those out amongst those that you can trust because yeah. it sounds like you trust them it's just that you're 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 still managing to to focus focus on what exactly they need and uh you know you all live in an area where there's primary health clinics you yeah. know yeah. you have to go all the way to what is you know have you thought about you know something like one of those uh, neighborhood clinics yeah uh, we did except you know, it's it kind of goes back to that whole uh, having the time to do so, you know. Again, I've, I mean, I guess I could. <clears throat> I'm not gonna say that, that I that I can't or that I shouldn't. Uh, and it sounds like you're so busy and consumed that maybe you're not aware of what's out there. And uh, sometimes los tíos y las tías saben, you know, our culture. It, right. It's we don't even need to look at ads, you know. <laughs> we have our own networks, like yeah. comunicación, and uh, and that's who you trust. Uh, and um, you know, think about, you know, maybe maybe your uncles already know the clinics inside and out and you can save some time there. And uh, and there's there go according to income because I understand your parents you said they don't have a single right? Right, yeah. And right. that'll save you a lot of time in going back and forth. Because it sounds to me like if you get lifted off some of those uh, uh, you know tasks that you're still overseeing, you're still in charge, you're mm -hmm. still the one who knows your parents the best. Right. So, um, think about that. Yeah, I guess it's food for thought. I mean, you know, there's like uh, San Vicente and all these other places. And uh, I don't know, I guess I just, you know, I want to do what, what what they want to do. You know, it's, you know, I'm not going to go against what mom and dad said. And they're very, you know, like, that's what's you know. <laughs> Like there's no, oh, they're, they're right. not very. I mean, the doctors that they have in what is if I mean they've gone to them all their life. Oh, well, mm -hmm. last nineteen years. I guess that's a whole life for some people. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're just really accustomed to those, and they you know they have it's almost like an extended part of the family is like mm -hmm. the doctor, la doctora, and this and that. So, so they're already pretty much um, have a a. Uh, a trusting relationship yeah. with her, with her. And, and that's that's very important in yeah. the cultura, you know, yeah. but we, we, we don't trust, there's nothing. And um, and yet, you know, you might want to mention it to them or look at other ways that 
this richness of the comunidad, de la familia, can assist you. Um, but it sounds to me like you haven't really gotten there to the point of you know, <coughs> talking to them. About right. That. Yeah. And again, it go, kind of goes down to, you know, I might have my doctorate, I'm going to have this, or I might have this, but you know, I'm still going to be, you know, my mom's still like, I know it's just a little, just a little you didn't do this, you didn't do that. <laughs> so I'm always going to be the, 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 you know, her son, to say, to say the least. Yeah, she's a mom. Yeah. And so, again, I mean, I don't, they, they know what they want. Uh, yeah, I guess I could, oh, yeah, I don't know, but. <laughs> telling, yeah, yeah, telling mom and dad that you know, like, hey, let's try this new place, right? Let's go to this this new place again. You know, yeah. uh, they got everything already set down. What is so? But hey, man, it's food for thought, like you said. You know, just mm -hmm. look at new places. I don't have to worry about the two-hour wait line on the bridge. That you're, would help. You're still like struggling with uh, with respect on his with the uh, individualism, you know, personal. Uh, where I want to see myself. And, and I'm certain that your parents want you to be successful in your purpose. It sounds to me like those are the values that they instill. Yeah, yeah. And you're practicing them. So, <laughs> you know, Chris should be very, very proud of himself. Oh, I am. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond blessed. And mm -hmm. I'm proud of things I've done. And proud of, you know, hopefully things to, the things to come. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I put, like I said, you know, I owe it to all to them. And yeah, it's. I guess it's just tough. It's just tough telling you know telling your parents that they got to do this instead of that. So the, the, the introspect, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. and uh, and you want to make sure you do that. Yes, well, you've succeeded so far. It's just the struggle <laughs> yeah. for school. Yeah, getting past that. And uh, you've got uh, a priest that knows them personally. You know, so you've got the, the resources are there. La familia, la comunidad, yeah. and you're on the right track. It's just how to. You know, get a focus. Yeah, heck, I mean, focus. even you talking, I was maybe even think of, you know, maybe even getting Padrecito, uh, Padre Frank to, to tell him something, and heck, maybe I could use him to, to yeah, get them to, to do some yeah. stuff. Chris doesn't have to do this alone. It yeah. sounds to me like Chris has all kinds of uh, resources, uh, you know. La familia, la comunidad. Yeah. They're, they're all there with you. You're, you're not alone. Doesn't sound to me like you're alone at all. Oh, no. Just learning how to start uh, focusing and connecting and uh, how you're going to accomplish what you have on your plate mm -hmm. and that you won't feel so stretched. Yeah, yeah that, would, that would help. So, easier said than done, right? No, you're on the right track. <laughs> you're on the right track. Um, in this in this example, um, if we really try to ex examine and exemplify the importance of the engagement, but also in the ideas of examining and exploring the context of family. Um, as you notice, that Ms. Martinez was very careful to make sure that she didn't rush into the treatment process. She spent time getting to know Chris, asked him about the travel to get here, and eased into talking about his family because obviously the family is very important. So when she spent time speaking about his family, what emerged from that, what themes emerged was that the natural support systems that were coming through and were there, but Chris, because of the high stress level, he wasn't able to cope because in his head, he had this responsibility to, to, to provide for his family versus looking for other folks to help him out, which he's an, he's, a, he's an educated young man, he's a smart young man, and in any other context, he probably would suggest to a friend um, at school, if you're having stress problems or you need support, to go outside of the family or go to other systems. But within his own culture and his own way of looking at his problems, he saw himself as, as responsible for his family. And um, I think that was well illustrated um, given Ms. Martinez's um, examination of the family. Um, you also notice that she didn't work and strive to sort of redefine the problem or come up with some diagnostic sort of criteria to say that he had some sort of um, um, uh, diagnosis or anything, but she was really looking towards the strength of his culture and his family and the, and the community at large, it seemed, that to, to find solutions to his problems. 
One of the things that we really want to talk about, and I think was she exemplified very, very well, is the idea of active listening and how that may, be, may appear differently with a, with a Latino versus an Anglo. An Anglo family or an Anglo client may be very attuned to or very used to getting right to the point and working very quickly to, for, for problem solving and looking for solutions. In this case, you saw that um, um, at times, um, in this case, you saw that Ms. Martinez didn't do that. She, some of her active listening was a little bit abrupt. She didn't let Chris finish off his thoughts on, on occasion. And that could be perceived by a Latino as potentially being disrespectful. Um, because a Latino person really wants to feel that the, that the person, whether the professional, whether is, um, is really hearing and, and understanding that understanding what they're saying. So there was a couple times you, I think you could see that Ms. Martinez really didn't let Chris finish. And that was, that was um, probably not the best way of handling it. Now the, the negative outcome of that potentially could have been that Chris could have felt disrespected or not heard, and that could have really had a negative impact on the therapeutic alliance, meaning that he may not have come back um, for another session. Um, um, and as, he, as, as she wrapped up, you could see that she went full circle. She identified the support systems through her examination of family and community, and she was able to sort of offer Chris the suggestion, not necessarily the directive, of maybe expanding his purview in terms of acknowledging that those folks are in his life and are willing to sort of help him without challenging his idea that his, his responsibility to the family was wrong or there was a level of enmeshment or that he should feel guilty about um, seeking out other supports or, uh, supports or community. Um, Sylvia, what did you uh, like yes, to add? Uh, as a professional that we work in health, it's so important to be active, listen to the patient, mm -hmm. to, to wait until the client finish to talk. Because if we feel listened, we feel in some part he healed. Mm -hmm. So if, and if I feel that the person doesn't listen to me, I'm going to feel disrespect and that the person doesn't care about me. That's why it's so important and I maybe will not want to mm. go back to this professional. Also, it is so important, uh, as Virginia did it, to take all this uh, resistance and change it to an assistance, mm. cambiar la resistencia a asistencia. Mm. And uh, sometimes we look or difference in the culture as an issue, mm. but it, in the other hand, our culture can help us to be resilient. Mm. And to have support and to resolve problems. So it is so important as a professionals to understand this difference between Latinos and Anglos and even between mm -hmm. between Latinos in different different cultures. And I I think you are the one that can talk about the Cubans or Puerto Ricans and yeah, one of the things we want to sort of also take note about is that we don't want to stereotype and classify all Latinos in the same group. That's a very heterogeneous group, and yes. I've worked in South Florida for many years. So the idea that a that a, um, a Mexican national is going to have the same cultural framework as um, someone from Cuba or from South America um, is we have to be very thoughtful about that. For instance, the idea of timing and getting to the point. There's some, you know, um, Latino cultures where getting to the point and getting down to business is perfectly okay, but then some others there's not, and how you engage them will be different. So it's important that we're that we take note of that and that we're as culturally responsive to the to, to the different ethnic groups and cultural groups within the Hispanic population or um, Latino population. Okay. So one of the things that you have to be thoughtful about is certainly um, um, when you talk when you're working with different um, Latino. Latino groups is their migration status. So obviously a Latino who's been in the United States and maybe second generation, they will hold a lot of cultural attributes, but it may be different. So if it's a Cuban person who has come to the United States most recently, um, they hold a lot of very classic Hispanic cultural views and values. 
um, but a Cuban who's been living maybe in Mex um, in Florida for some period of time may have be more acculturated. And when you engage them, they are expecting a little bit more of a let's get down the point and let's and let's um, start problem solving. However, a Mexican family, no matter the level of acculturation, um, we have to be very thoughtful about the timing like we just talked about. Um, Puerto Rican family the same way. However, if they're from New York, for instance, and they've been acculturated here for, for a long time, um, they may be because they may be a down to business kind of person. So part of the process is really assessing, understanding the cultural sort of um, level, acculturation level, but also getting to know them as an individual, as a human being, because we really can't stereotype. And hopefully we're not saying that all Mexican folks in the world are going to treat a certain way.